The sidewalks along Fifth Avenue are always crowded with shoppers. Fran and Sally did some shopping too. They were just window shopping here though. Yes, this is the Tiffany's, the world famous jewelry store. So I saw a clip recently of Carrie Fisher on Craig Ferguson's show. It's an old clip from a few years ago. And for whatever reason, they were talking about bras. I think Carrie Fisher said, I put on a bra for this. And Craig Ferguson said, what, do you not normally wear bras? Like he was kind of trying to make a joke. And Carrie Fisher just turned to the audience and said, how many women like wearing bras? Do you like wearing bras? And Craig Ferguson was like, what are you talking about? And of course, all the women went, no. And he was like, what? Um, <laughs> but my question is, like, I mean, I think I would have said the same thing. So my question is, like, how did this happen? Like, aside from just general, like, patriarchy, like, when was this decision made that women should always wear bras? I think that they've become these, like, these beautiful ornamental pieces that you're proud to acquire as an 11-year-old. And then they stay at this sort of elevated status in your life, like, oh, it's time you get a new bra, and it, it's lace, or it's it's animal print, or it's pink, or it's purple, and it becomes this point of pride. And so the whole relationship with your breasts becomes arrested by your relationship with your bra. Yeah, Do you agree? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, yeah, I, did, I didn't expect you to say that, actually, but that's really interesting. I mean, it's almost commercialized, right? It's almost like this sort of almost capitalist, <laughs> I hate to bring that in, but capitalist thing where it's like, oh, isn't this exciting that you get to wear a bra? And it turns into, sort of sneaks, sneaks up on you as this kind of like consumer thing. It's, it's like kind of an, an introduction to materialism yeah. uh, for our private garments. Because think about it. Think about the industry. If it, men, men designed the bras, and men designed the bras based on an ideal, rather than what a bra might actually force a body to conform to. Like, for example, the underwires, the way they come up underneath the armpit, and they cinch a woman's lymph nodes. That they weren't thinking about that. They've got these underwires that come up and literally create indentations in the in the in the in the skin and in the tissue. I mean, you can see it when you do thermography. You can see that the bra creates an indentation across the entire torso, and obviously, it's not creating numbness per se. But I think over time, you have to wonder what the effects of that are. Definitely. And one thing I was thinking about is um, what you were just talking about is how bras actually change like the shape of somebody, like a person's breasts, how they look, to the point where we don't really, as women, like understand what breasts look like. You know what I mean? You sort of think, oh, they're supposed to be this shape, like this round shape that the bra has designed for them, but they, they aren't really. And you don't really realize that until you kind of see other people not wearing bras or, and you know, that's where your film came to mind. It's really strange. I think the bra has homogenized women's breasts. It's it's made them into this generalized domain. You know, because the bra, it harnesses the breast and it sort of creates this sort of standard presentation. You know, it oversimplifies the presence of the breast. It homogenizes it. It reduces them to... I don't know what, just a kind of a mere appendage. Yeah, definitely. And I think there is a lot of damage there that we don't really realize until we start thinking about it. Like that, just that not, like I was saying, not being able to see that breasts are different shapes and they're, you know, floppy or they're round or they're, you know, saggy or whatever. It's true. It's so important that we have that individualization. I mean, for example, think of our lips or our noses or our hair, like we all have a unique way our body expresses itself and we learn to take pride in that, to um, enhance our individuality. And why would the breast be any different? I think this is part of this corralling a body part into a kind of exclusive domain, exclusively sexual, exclusively private, exclusively hidden, exclusively for the husband. But if our hearts are central to our identities as women, and if we can assume that the breasts are the face of our hearts, then what 
to what extent are we closing off an important, a significant, a profound aspect of ourselves from the world around us and from those who love us most?